Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. This is going to be the video about plant dyeing. I'm gonna explain everything I know, but please note that I'm not an expert on it, that I've just done it a few times and that I really enjoyed it. So I'm gonna share everything I know. And my method is the minimalist and easiest method I know, but it's not necessarily the best. So I'm just gonna share with you what I know and I hope you can have fun with plants dying as well. If you're new here, my name is Leah. I upload videos twice a week about minimalism and sustainable living. If you're interested in these topics, consider subscribing to my channel. And now let's get started. I want to talk about the basics and the things you need to know before starting to dye with plants first. And then I'm gonna show you what I um, dyed myself during the past few weeks and how that worked out and what I liked about it, what not, and just the whole process of it. So the first thing to consider when you want to dye something with plants is the fabric you use. So there are different kinds of fabrics. Protein fibers, which are wool and silk, and maybe other animal fibers like angora, rabbit fur, and things like that. I do not use this, these. Then there are cellulose-based fabrics, which are just all the plant fibers. And these are the fibers I use to dye. And then there are all the synthetic fibers. I would advise against these because it just really doesn't work this well. Until now, I've dyed with cotton fibers and other, other plant fibers. I think hemp or linen would work great as well, but I haven't used these. Also, just beware of polyester threads. Because if you have a 100% cotton garment, you want to dye, but it has a polyester thread, you will be able to see that. Because look at this. This it has been a polyester thread. Now, with this shirt, I don't think it looks too bad. It's just you, you are able to see it, but I don't think it's... Yeah, I don't mind. But just beware of these like threads because they will not take on any color. You can also dye wood or other things, but I have sticked to like clothes and towels until now. Also, I would really like to dye bed sheets, for example, but I do not have a pot that is like big enough. So the next very important topic is mordants. Mordants are things that make your fabric ready to take on all the color and also try to make, make it as color fast as possible. Now I'm a minimalist and I am lazy, so I do not use mordants. But now with not using mordants, maybe the colors are not sticking to the fabric as well and maybe it washes out a lot quicker. With onion skin dye, for example, you don't really need mordant. It, use, it works pretty well without. And with avocado skins, I've also had great results and I had the, the, like the garment for months at least and it, it washed out a little bit, but I washed it 20 times, so that's okay. And with other things, I have like no experience, but a lot of people advise that you use mordants and so I want to talk a little bit about it. Since I don't use them, I do not have too much knowledge about it. For example, soy milk works great. It's not exactly a mordant, but it really helps the garment to take on the color and to make it color fast, or at least like keeping the color better. And that's, for example, something you could use, but I decided against that because the things I'm gonna show you in this video are things that I did completely zero waste and for free. So I collected the things for free. I needed to dye these um, clothes with. So that's why I didn't use soy milk. And other things are all these like metal salts. Like there's an aluminum version, there's an iron version, there's other metals that you can use, but you have to get them, I don't know, maybe on the internet. I have never done that and I've heard that they are a bit toxic. Not like super toxic, but at least you have to be very careful with them. And for now, I just decided to stick to plants and things to dye that I could also eat. So there's nothing toxic in there and I could even eat my dye if I wish to do that. So talking about toxic ingredients and things like that, I, as I said, I have only used things you could also eat. So I didn't bother buying extra equipment for dyeing. 
I just used the pots I, ha I do also use for cooking food. Now, everywhere on the internet it says don't do that because a lot of plants you can use for dyeing do maybe contain things you shouldn't eat. So maybe it's not the best advice when I say you can use the same pots. So just do your own research and be very careful with that. But as long as you really stick to plants you can also eat, I cannot imagine where there should be a problem with that. So with that said, let's move on to the actual process of dyeing things. So I can show you these four things that I have dyed during the past few weeks. From top to bottom, it's nettles, onion skins, avocado skins and pits, and blackberry that I used for dyeing these. The process is always really similar. The, the onion skins I just collect whenever I cook something with onions and once I have enough, I can use them for dyeing. With, with avocado skins and pits, I as well eat the avocados and then I freeze the skins and pits to keep them from rotting and then I use the frozen skins and pits. For nettles, I just went out and collected some and the same goes for blackberries. Also, I cannot really tell you how much you need of these dyeing materials to use on your fabric. It's always the same. The more you use, the stronger the color will get. Also, keep in mind that you have to have at least enough water to let the thing you want to dye float freely. So you kind of have to find the sweet spot between having a concentrated dye and having enough water for the thing you want to dye to float freely. So I had one small pot full of onion skins I used on two t-shirts. I had about, I think, seven avocados worth of skins and pits for, again, two t-shirts. And I used about, I don't know, maybe 30 blackberries for this small towel or like washcloth and I used one pot full of nettles for my green washcloth. I dyed with nettles. Then you just always fill the pot up with water and boil it for a while. You usually takes about half an hour to one and a half hours until you really can see like that the water becomes very colorful. Now with some dyes you have to be careful with heat. I have not figured out how it works exactly. I do not know if it works better, if it's lower or higher heat, but I think with nettles you have to be careful. So I try to not to like actually boil them, but to just let them simmer. And for the rest, I, I can boil them. I haven't seen a difference. What's also important is to pre-soak your fabric before you put it into the dye. What you can do is to pre-soak or pre-boil it with water that contains vinegar or salt. Both should help to the fabric to take on more color. I didn't do that with the onion skin and avocado pit dye, but I did try the vinegar me method with the nettles and blackberries. So I did boil my garments in water that was like one fifth vinegar, four fifth water to see if it would work better, but I can't really tell you. I think it worked okay, but not amazingly. So maybe that was the vinegar, maybe it would have worked similarly if I didn't use that. In general, I have to say plant dyeing is always an adventure. You will never get the exact, exact same results as long as you use my method or as long as you're not like taking it to the next level of measuring everything and controlling the environment. But I think that's part of its beauty to just experiment and see what's happening. And maybe someday you have a complete fail and maybe some days it works so much better than you thought. So I think that's the beauty of it. I like that. So when you have soaked your fabric and boiled the dye for an hour, you can remove everything out of the dye bath before you put the fabric in, or you could be lazy like me and just put your fabric into the dye with everything in there. I always have the hope that maybe these skins and pits and leaves and berries would give off some more color, but I don't really know if that's true. Also, if you want to have even results, maybe take out the things first in because maybe they stain or something like that. 
I just always put the fabric in and then you can actually leave it from half an hour to three days. Usually the longer you leave it in there, the stronger the color gets. You can also boil it again. I did that with the avocado skins. I did that with the onion skins. I also did that with the nettles, but after 24 hours. But I think that was actually not a good idea because I felt like the color was gone after I boiled it again. So maybe don't do that with everything, but at least you can like keep it hot for a while and let it cool down very slowly and maybe reheat it, but like keep it from boiling. But I would say for onion skins, avocado skins and pits and blackberries, after a few hours, there's nothing really changing anymore about the color. That's at least my experience. What I did is just look at it from time to time to see if I like it. And then I realized that my onion skin top was not dyed evenly. Now I try to like leave it in there overnight, but it didn't change anything. It has some spot where there is more and less dye. So I think I just have to live with that, but I don't think it's that bad. So that's okay for me. I don't, I don't really care. So after I left it in there for hours and always checked again, finally I decided it's time to take the things out. I usually don't rinse them right away, but I leave them to dry first and then at, after some time I rinse them. A thing that you have to keep in mind with plant dye, usually plant dye doesn't really love sun. So if you put the garments in sunlight to let it dry there for a week, maybe the dye is completely gone because it just it lets the color fade more quickly when you put it in sunlight. I also realized with one of my shirts that I dyed this spring and I wore it really frequently that the outside had less color than the inside after a few months because of course the outside had seen a lot more sunlight than the inside. Again, maybe a mordant would really help to prevent this from happening, but I chose to not use mordants. I don't think there's anything wrong with using them. I just decided to not do that. So I think you have to find a decision for your own. If it's important to you that the color is really gonna be like that for the longest time possible, or if you're okay with it fading or changing over time. The fading of the color is really different for every piece. So now I want to talk about the individual pieces that I dyed and how they performed until now and what I have been seeing and what you can make, what is maybe useful to you if you try that same method. So first we have the washcloth I dyed with metals. I, here you can't really even see it. It doesn't even look green, but maybe if we hold it against something else, yeah, you can see now it's, it's a bit green. And on this side, it's greener than on this side. I think you can clearly see the difference. And I don't know why this is. Usually this is maybe again because of sunlight, but this side has actually seen less sun than the other side. I will see what happens if I like rinse it again and wash it again and see what like happens to the color. But I was a bit disappointed because it just, it doesn't take, it didn't take on the color as well as I hoped it would. Now it's still a, a lovely light green, but I wish I would find a method that worked a bit better to like get more consistent results and a green that sticks better. So that's the thing I wanted to say about that. Now moving on to the onion skin top. Onion skin usually works great. You can see it took on a lot of color, but again, these are the spots I was talking about. You can clearly see that it's uneven and I don't really mind it, but I don't really understand it because I soaked it and usually if it's soaked, it should take on the color like evenly, but maybe it's because I didn't stir frequently enough or I did not have enough water in that pot so it couldn't float as freely as it wanted to. So these could be reasons. Another thing that happened to me with this shirt is that I um, did something with a lemon and some of the lemon juice sprinkled on this t-shirt. And now I don't know if you're able to see it, but there are little spots where the color um, went away. Like the lemon juice was, was actually able to bleach away the color a bit. I don't think it's too noticeable and I don't really mind because it was uneven from the start, but that's just something I wanted to say. 
that this can like change the color. The next top is the Avocado Skins and Pits top. And here, um, I, I really like it. I dyed this in the spring and then I re-dyed it um, recently and now it has more color. A thing that I noticed here is that these buttons are made of some kind of metal material. And I know, don't know where I should show you, but around the buttons, it's darker. Like the button has something in it that, you, that works as a mordant, I think. Because look at that, it really changed the color of the shirt. Now that's not too bad, that's just very interesting, I think. And also it's different um, fabrics, so there's a bit of a difference in color between this part and this part, but I don't even think you can actually see it that well right now. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say to this. The last thing is the washcloth I dyed with blackberries. And on this side it's beautiful and on this side it doesn't have that much color. Now this is actually really already from bleaching from the sun. I dried it um, at the window and some parts of it got more sunlight than others. So I think the color is already starting to be, to be a bit uneven and again this has more color than this side. So yeah, that's just what happened with this. I, I don't know how it's gonna be in the future or how long it takes to actually fade or, or how big the difference is gonna be to maybe parts that see sunlight versus parts that do not see sunlight. That would be an interesting thing to do with something to wear where you can actually see the inside and the outside. But that's just one, what I wanted to show you. You guys, it's a few days later and I washed my dyed washcloth with 40 degrees in a washing machine, dried them in the sun and I have to be honest, there's not that much left. For comparison, these are the three washcloth and this was the nettle one, this one was the blackberry one. Wow, it's I mean it's a lovely grey but that's definitely not what it was in the beginning and that's an older um, onion one but it's like really old and... I think I've washed it with 60 degrees or 95 even Celsius, like boiling hot. So there's a lovely bit of color left, but just so you know. I don't think it's gonna change that much from here, but that's definitely not the purple it was before anymore. I just wanted to let you know. And maybe that proves that my method is stupid to not use mordants, but also I like my method. I can use my pots for eating again afterwards. I think it's just a fun hobby to do, a thing that is, yeah, it's it's just fun and it's it's an adventure. And I, if you want, I can give you an update after like half a year or a year to see how the fabric and the color has performed and how it looks now after frequent using. And please let me know all your questions and also let me know if you have tried dyeing with plants and how your results were. If you end up dyeing something and want to link me in your photos on Instagram, you can find my Instagram account down below and I will be happy to see your results. If you want to see more, I link you a video and a playlist right here and I hope to see you next time. Bye!